Today we're playing Ask a Neurosurgeon with Dr. Glenn Harper, who just happens to be with Advanced Pain Care. Good morning, Dr. Harper. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I am excited. I'm actually uh, excited to have some frequently asked questions to pick your brain a little bit. So first question, how does a neurosurgeon actually decide when someone needs spine surgery, Dr. Harper? That's a great question. You know, um, there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is spend time with the patient understanding their pain. We're going to ask lots of questions and just have a time where the patient can describe what what they've been experiencing. And then after that, we're gonna do a physical examination. And those are really kind of the meat of it. That's the important portion. After that, we wanna look at some sort of imaging, uh, MRI, CT scan, myelography, something that we can correlate to the symptoms the patient has been talking about. And so if there's not a correlation there, there's probably not a surgery to do. But once we start to see a correlation, then we wanna know things like, um, you know, is there uh, a neurologic problem, a deficit the patient mm -hmm. has, like weakness, or, or rapid loss of function. And we may jump straight to surgery in those cases, but the rest of the cases, we're actually gonna try really some conser conservative therapies first. We'll wanna do um, things like physical therapy, have them see pain management physicians, all kinds of things to try and avoid surgery as much as possible. And only in those cases that we can't uh, avoid surgery, then uh, surgery can be a great option for many people. Wow, okay, so a little bit mind-blowing there. I'm asking a neurosurgeon and he's saying that the answer is not always surgery. So I actually like what I'm hearing here um, that actually, you know, it instills a lot of extra confidence in, you know, what you do and the advice that you're gonna give that it, it's not just always going to be surgery, it's only as needed. Okay, so next question. Why does it seem that a patient that gets one spine surgery always seems to need another one in the future? Is that pretty normal? I wouldn't necessarily say it's normal. It's a normal question. Now I get that question. <laughs> and you know, a lot of people uh, ask that in a way that almost sounds like that the first surgery causes additional surgeries. Mm -hmm. But you know, the spine is really complex. It's 25 bones stacked on top of each other. In between, it's a three part joint. And so you can imagine how many things can go wrong with that system. I would say that outside of trauma, the majority of spine surgery is done for degenerative processes. So, you know, just because we fix one small area of the spine, maybe two levels, one or two levels of the spine, doesn't stop the degeneration of all the other levels, mm. even in those levels that we operate on. So that's one of the problems. Um, a second problem, though, actually can be a result of the surgery, and that is if we do a fusion surgery where we get two bones to grow together, that puts a little bit of stress at the levels, the levels above and below. Mm -hmm. And so increases the chance by about 20% that those might need a surgery in the future as well. Okay, that makes a lot of sense actually. Um, all right, next question here. Everyone knows someone who's had spine surgery, it seems, uh, that didn't maybe work. Why would that be? Well, you know, that's a tough one um, because it, it really begs the question as to what, it, what does it mean for it to not work, right? Mm, so okay. some mm -hmm. patients' goals are not the same as the surgeon's goals. Um, one example would be, let's say that somebody has a pinched spinal cord and is losing function. The main goal of that, of a surgery to take pinch off the, off the spinal cord is to keep from losing more function. Mm -hmm. Whereas a patient may come in expecting full restoration of function, which may not be possible. And so that's one of the issues we deal with. Uh, another is that after a nerve has been pinched for a while and we take off the pinch, there may be already be some permanent changes in a nerve that we can't predict ahead of time. Uh, we know that there's even permanent changes as, as far up as the brainstem and the way that the receptors, the pain receptors respond, that we can't undo any of that that's already happened. And then I'd say one of the, one of the big problems is necessarily getting the exact right diagnosis. It's such a complex system that sometimes the thing that we see that is glaring on an MRI that says, you know, this needs surgery, may it end up not being the cause of the pain, but we can't know that without doing the surgery first. All right, so you're checking all the boxes. I'm asking the hard questions. I got another one for you though. Are there options to major invasive spine surgery? You sort of touched on this at the top that maybe surgery isn't always the option. Tell us more. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a really important point because I would say that uh, for every 10 patients that I see, about three of them I end up operating on. The other seven, mm -hmm. we, we come up with some other plan and some other way to treat okay. them. Um, you know, I, I talk about really there's there's four things you can do with spine related pain. First thing is sometimes do nothing. 
and patients are shocked to hear that, but some people just need some reassurance that there's not something really bad going on and they're fine with, with uh, mm -hmm. just controlling the pain with other means. The second is all the non-invasive options, things like physical therapy, anti-inflammatories, people try chiropractic and acupuncture. There's a whole lot of things in that non-invasive category that can be really helpful and may be able to fix uh, the problem for somebody or make it so that they have better quality of life. And then the third option before we get to surgery are things like injections and the things that my pain colleagues do. Um, and so many people can can get rid of back pain or get good control of back and neck pain without ever uh, needing a spine surgery. A lot of good news here coming from you, doctor. Now, uh, one final thing, you are with Advanced Pain Care and we mentioned that off the top. So for folks who don't know a lot about Advanced Pain Care or maybe are interested in hearing even more, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, who Advanced Pain Care is and what y'all do? You know, at Advanced Pain Care, we're really about trying to control people's pain with the most minimally invasive surgery possible, or the most minimally invasive techniques, oftentimes not surgery. And so we have, uh, it's a multidisciplinary group with uh, behavioral health specialists, pain management specialists, uh, addiction specialists, neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons. We have quite a number of different specialties here, and it's all focused on a pain with really minimally basic techniques. And one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is, is a really minimally invasive technique to, that's been working great for pain, the spinal cord stimulator. Um, we implant a lot of those because we're finding the te technology is just incredible. It's helping uh, an enormous number of people regain a great quality of life. Fantastic. Well, I really like what you guys do and what you're all about. Thank you so much for taking the time to let me ask a neurosurgeon today. I really appreciate it. I know you're a busy man. So uh, be well, stay well. And thanks again, Dr. Harper. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.